Hello and welcome. So we made it to day 100. All right. So a hundred game, well, 99 games so far. This will be the hundredth game. And I started with 1525 rating on day one. We're up to 1653 now. So let's see what happens today. Now, I was going to play through day 100 before I switch to the new opening repertoire, but why wait another day? So I had been playing E4 with white. I'm gonna switch that to D4 for a more, more strategic games and less craziness, hopefully. Now, when my opponent plays E4, I'd been playing e5 leading to some, I don't know, some crazy stuff. So I'm going to try and play c6, the Karo Khan, against e4. Now with d4, we'll have to see how it goes. I might play d5 and then c6, you know, a kind of a similar Karo Khan setup, but it's called the Slav. Now, with C4, I'm not sure yet. So, let's dive into this. Uh, we'll just start this new repertoire. With D4, I've been trying to work on uh, learning this Jabava London system, uh, where you play D4, Knight to C3, and then Bishop to F4. Uh, so, you'll have to forgive me if these games at first could be pretty rough, uh, because... I'm trying uh, new openings that I'm not as familiar with, so it'll take me some time to uh, read up on them and get this new repertoire down. So let's begin here. Day 100, we're looking for an opponent. And let's see if we have white. So we do have white, so we can try this Jabava London system. All right. So we play d4, taking a share of the center. Uh, they play knight to f6 to prevent us from playing e4. So in the Jabava, you move knight to c3, which blocks this pawn, uh, the c pawn. Uh, but we develop this, and you know we have a good diagonal here. All right, so they're doing the same. Now, because they did that, it allows us to push to f3, and then we'll be able to jump forward here and attack their bishop with g4. So let's see what they decide to do next here. All right. And also, okay, so they attack this. So I think we'll just go here and fortify that. Then we can push forward and attack. Attack their bishop with g4. So I'm trying to learn all this, uh, this new Jabava London system. And, you know, it's a little tricky, but okay. So they play that now. Do we jump forward here? I mean, or first do we attack? I mean, maybe we just go ahead and attack there, gain some time. Um, they have to retreat. If we jump our knight up to here, does that even work? Okay. Um, okay. Well, or do we jump this knight forward? We could do that. Jump our knight forward. Let's 
So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so they cover it. Now, did that really achieve anything though? Um, it does let us bring this up. Hmm. All right, we'll just go there, see what they do. The only problem is now, you know, is this knight really doing much here? Okay, so they capture. Now, this knight could be chased away, and then where is it going? So, well, we probably have to capture it with this pawn. Hmm. So we'll go ahead and do that. Probably need to get this bishop up here. But I should play h4 as well. And the problem now is this knight. Where's this knight going? Yeah, see? Now the knight has to retreat back to here. And he could attack here or just move this and now that knight is kind of not placed very well there. Hmm. All right. Yeah, see now the knight can come under attack. So we don't really want to let him capture that. Hmm. Should we develop our queen out here? Maybe we could try that. All right. Or do we retreat this knight back? It's probably better to develop, but is our queen going to be out of position off here? And if he attacks and we capture this... Could that cause any problems? Um, so if our queen goes up here to a4 and he attacks the queen and we capture, well, then we could capture this, I guess. Hmm. All right. We'll do that. Okay, so now we're under attack. Do we capture or do we just develop our knight now? Hmm. problem is if he captures us we recapture his queen could come down here all right we'll do that we'll just do that i probably should have well i don't know if I should have captured. It would have gotten rid of our bad bishop, but we could wait till his queen moves and then capture and his queen would just have to kind of waste a move by going by moving again. All right, and we want to play we want to play this h4 move.
Okay, so. Yeah, I still have a lot to learn in this Jabava London. So I'm reading a book by Simon Williams um, on the Jabava London. And, you know, that should help. Uh, I think it's a newer book. But, you know, as I just started, I have a long way to go. I only know a few of the concepts. And so I don't know how you make your opening repertoire. I kind of like to write down the moves. So you could do it anyway, right? You know, put it in a, a document on your phone or on a piece of paper. I kind of like to use flashcards. And so for this game, I'll put d4 down and then they played knight to f6 so then i'll figure out what my best response is which uh knight to c3 according to the book i'm reading and then i have to go through and see where i deviated from the best moves and that way uh, whenever you're playing you can go ahead and just write those moves down Uh, and then you'll know when you get to something different or un unexpected um, by keeping track of you know all your moves for the different openings. So, for example, let's say you know you want to play d4, and instead of knight to f6, they play an unusual move, you know, like maybe g6. Well, then you can write that down and go look it up and see what your response would be. And then slowly over time, you just add... Uh, like one new move at a time. All right, so let's go up here. We'll threaten to trap his bishop. Oh, the bishop can't be trapped because our knight here. Hmm. All right, well. Yeah, I think I should have. Okay, well. Do we do that and then, oh, he's trying to open the game up here trying to open things up all right can we ignore that should we trap his hmm Well, what do we want to do here? So now we're, we've got issues. We could try and pin that knight. Ah, we'll just capture. We'll go ahead and capture. Probably shouldn't open the center up. We'll see if that was a, a big mistake or not. Now his knight will probably jump forward. We have to figure out, do we want to capture that knight? Hmm. All right, so if I was him, I would probably just bring my knight down into the game unless he's trying to push this pawn forward. Okay, so he does that. If we capture the knight, then we attack here. Hmm. All right, all right. Uh, 
All right, I don't know if we should have given up our bishop pair. All right, we'll go ahead, see if we can trap his bishop. Okay, that was kind of expected. Now, we'll go there, attack his bishop. We have to watch out, our king is kind of uh, really open here. <laughs> oh, he could come over here and check me with uh, his bishop. Mm. I need to watch out because, man, yeah, this is looking dangerous. Pretty dangerous. I could be in trouble here. So something to find out in this Jabava London is what I should be doing with my king. You know, should I have castled over here earlier? I probably should have gotten rid of this bishop by developing my bishop up to d3 earlier and traded these bishops off maybe. You know, and leaving my queen over here in the center instead of off to the side here. I don't know. My opponent has a lot of options here. You know, he could just develop the rook, line it up on my king. You know, then what do I do? Um, maybe I jump over here. But these bishops are looking dangerous. So, you know, if I can knock one out by capturing... That might be a good thing to do. Or even moving up here, attacking, moving my king up here and attacking his bishop. I don't know, it's just looking a little scary with my king stuck in the center there. Hmm. So I definitely need to try and knock out this bishop, but I would think my opponent would probably just line up his rook right here. You know, unless he wants to capture something. I mean, probably wouldn't want to give up the bishop pair. So what if he just goes here, lines up on my king? Well, then I'm going to have to run so maybe I go here, something like that. You know, will he check me? He could just check me. If he does that, check with the bishop, I would have to go here maybe. Then I'm attacking his bishop. He could capture mine. You know, what is the best? Yeah, maybe that's the best. He captures. Then my other rook could come over here and capture. And I keep my king here. But, you know, if that queen is able to jump down here and start attacking my king, uh, we'll see here. All right, what's another option? Um, moving here and attacking my queen with the pawn. But if he does that, 
Can I capture this? Maybe I could do that. So they're taking a long time to think here. So maybe that's what they're looking at. If they play B5 and I capture, they could push that pawn and attack my knight and attack me with this. But then my queen could just, well, I guess it could stay there. And then I could capture with my bishop and line up on his king side. Um, but you know, if I go there and I capture the pawn, or excuse me, if he plays b5 attacking my queen, I capture the pawn, then he goes here attacking my queen, then what do I do? I go here. Hmm, that could be tricky. If he goes here and I grab the pawn, hmm, if he goes here, if I grab that pawn and he attacks me, where does my queen go then? Um, can't go there. I would have to go back to here. He could attack me again. Oh, and just chase me around. Hmm. Maybe. Okay. So he decides to go for the check. All right. What do we want to do? Go after his bishop with my king. So we'll go ahead and do that. All right, which rook do we bring? I'm thinking this one. And then if he takes the open file, Mm, let's see, if he takes the open file, I think we pretty much have to go up here and attack. I think we have to attack. So, okay, wait a minute, maybe we don't because Well, we need to get rid of that. So maybe need to improve the position of this knight. Okay, and we're ahead on time. So we have time to think a little bit here. So do we attack immediately? He could check us here. He could get ready to bring his queen in here and check again if he moves this knight. So... You know, what would be best? He could just you know, move his queen over. Then if I capture the bishop, his queen ends up in here. And you know, that could cause some problems, maybe. All right. Um, what can we do? What can we do? We need to get this this knight into a better position. If we go here, oh man. I think we need to activate our queen. We need to bring this queen into the game, but where? You know, and also, do we attack the knight? 
Oh, or do we just go ahead and move here and attack this bishop? See, if we attack the knight, that knight has to retreat back to here. That might be good. Huh, that looks like a good option, I think. Oh, no, he could check us here. All right. Ah, the check, the check. Okay. Do we push forward? No, because he can capture that. All right. We need to cover this square and I'm burning up through I'm burning through time here. All right. Let's just bring that queen in. Try and aim it at his king side. And then, hmm. Ooh, he could push forward here. Threatening to keep pushing. Man, this king is really kind of stuck in the center here. All right, I don't know. I'm thinking that we need, yep, there he goes. All right. Well, I guess that kind of helps me bring my knight back into the center. But this knight is having a terrible time. So in the Jabava London, I need to figure out you know, what I should have done with this knight. Okay, so now at least if he attacks there, it'll just help my knight move forward. Okay, so let us go here. Okay, now we probably should just bring this knight up. Bring the knight up with that move. Now We could possibly threaten to go here, attacking the bishop, covering this square. The bishop would go where? Up this way somewhere. Okay. All right, I guess it's too late. Where do we send this king? Down one or over here? Hmm. All right, well, our options are limited. You know, we can't go this way, we can't block, so we, we only have one move, right? <laughs> so we just have to go here pretty much. So I don't know why we're taking all the time to think about that. Now, he can attack my queen by just moving his rook up. Mm. All right. Well, we need to either. Uh, well, this knight, this knight is pinned now by the rook, but we need to get a rook in here quickly. 
to fight for control of this open E file. Yeah, so that is important. All right, our time is looking good. So, you know, that's not bad. Why did this queen go here? Why? Okay, well, now, do we fight for control? I think so. What is this queen doing here? By going here, it could come down here, maybe? All right, we're doing that. Fighting for control of the open file. Hmm. All right. So do we want to go back here with our king? Hmm. All right, well, at least my opponent is burning a lot of time. Okay, they go there because they can double their rooks and threat, or you know, bring a rook over, threaten an attack here. Um, do we just pick him off right there? Oh, and if I move this, there's that threat. All right. Well, should probably go here. So we'll do that. This bishop could cause some problems. I mean, what if the bishop just goes right here? Oh man, yeah, that could be a problem. If that bishop just goes right there. Hmm. Well, then we have to move our rook and back it up. Back up with the queen, back this knight up. All right. Hmm, okay. Well, that is interesting. Okay, and he's really running low on time. So what should we do here? We have to be careful. Um, Do we just attack his bishop now? But then he could, like I said, go here. All right. Well, if we go up there, he could just retreat back and attack us. Okay. Hmm. Well, we should probably go here. Huh. 
help cover everything. Now, the only thing that kind of takes away from our you know, a room for this knight to move that kind of takes away a spot for the, our knight to move. Okay. Ah, what can we do here? What can we do? Mm, he's only got 30 seconds left. So I don't know. The time, hopefully that'll help us. But with 10 seconds added each time. All right, now he's really running low on time. If he's not careful, he's just going to run out of time here. Oh, man. He's got 10 seconds left. Okay. So he decides to go there. Um. Hmm. If. Well. We just bring this other one over. Hmm. We'll just go there. All right, so the knight moves. Where is this knight going? Here and then here, maybe. So, do we just attack the queen now by retreating back? Then we pick off this pawn. I think so, we'll just attack his queen kind of fortify everything then we can pick this off um, we could just attack his queen again so why don't we just do that we just fork his queen and his bishop get rid of that All right. Oh, we have a fork on his queen. Fork of the king and the queen. All right, that should end the game. Now we can pick off his queen. All right, he, he resigned because now we're forking his king and his queen. So there you have it. Finally, I ran into somebody else who has time trouble. <laughs> I wasn't, I'm not the only one with this time trouble problem. Okay, uh, let's do a quick game review and see you know, what we missed and what we can learn in this new opening repertoire, this Jabava London system. So uh, game review. Okay, so it looks like, oh man, I guess I didn't do very well here. White just kind of got behind. This is crazy. I was way behind here. Then the game was even uh, at this point. Then I'm losing, basically. So it looks like I was basically losing until the end when I just pull ahead and won in the end. Well, we definitely need to check that out. 
okay, I played at a 78.8% accuracy versus their 68.1. Uh, and it looks like we jumped up to a 60 or 1661 rating. So after 100 days, uh, we have, I went from 1525 to 1661. So still making progress. Um, but you know, in the future, I'm going to have to play more 1700 and above players. And that's where it starts getting tough. Okay, no brilliant moves. We each had one great move. Uh, I played 10 of the best versus their six best moves. So now, inaccuracies. Let's look at the bad moves. Two inaccuracies versus their five. We each had four mistakes. Um, I had two misses, and they had one. And then one blunder. So I played at a 1700 level versus their 1450. Okay. Okay. Let's start this review, and then I'll look closer with the analysis afterwards. Okay, so D4. This says, opening with the queen's pawn controls the center and usually leads to a more positional development of the pieces. So that's important. That's why I switched from E4 to D4. Uh, you know, hopefully getting more strategic and positional play uh, instead of crazy tactical stuff that happens a lot of times when you play e4 and the position opens up and gets wild and crazy okay this is the queen's pawn opening uh but we did the the jabava uh london system so it'll probably mention that more when i go in the analysis and review then so let's keep going here okay it did not like that move Huh, actually it said I should play e4 here. I missed an opportunity to strike in the center. Hmm. All right, well, that's interesting. Usually in the Jabava London, it tells you to play e3 here uh, to back up your d pawn. Okay, so... Uh, didn't like this. A mistake. The game was close to equal, but now your opponent has the advantage. So, yeah, this knight, I'll have to see what was best here because that knight just got me in trouble there the whole time. Especially when he can just move his rook over. If his knight was still up here, yeah, then it would be good. Um, but because his rook can just cover everything... You know, it did let me bring this up, but now where is this knight going? So, you know, that's not so good. Um, let's keep going here. We'll take a deeper look at these in the analysis. All right, C3 says that's a mistake. You allowed the opponent to eventually win a knight? Oh, man. Huh. Well, we'll definitely have to look at that. I mean, if he attacks me, I have to go here. And then, you know, I can still retreat back here. So I don't, I mean, I'm not going to look at these moves until we'll just keep going here. All right. C takes D4. So he captures towards the center. Now I had a miss here. I think. Let's go back. Yeah, it looks like they wanted me to capture towards the center. And then I could have dropped this knight back to this better square here. Because that knight, after you know, this, which they say is a great move, because it's kicking my knight way back here. And that knight was just a problem. Okay, and then, yeah, now it wants me to move the knight back towards the center, which would have been a better strategy. Now, I missed an opportunity to centralize a knight, so it controls more squares. And the queen's not doing much over here either, other than pinning this knight. All right, and then we have this. So, that was a mistake. Misses an opportunity to kick a queen. Oh, so they did want that move um, of pushing forward here 
which I thought I could just capture here, capture this pawn. Hmm. All right, well, more to look at in the analysis afterwards. Okay, so they check me. They said that's a mistake. Best would have been uh, to activate this queen, threatening to attack here. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, he should have, my opponent should have activated their queen earlier. And yeah, then they'd be 3.6. You know, that's almost a winning advantage there. Mm, my king just stuck in the center. So I made some uh, mistakes in this game. I have to you know, learn where best to place my pieces. And that's what you want to do in a lot of openings. Uh, you know, in the opening, you just find out what the best moves are for the first few moves. Uh, but then as you go deeper into the opening, you need to figure out where the best squares are to put all your different pieces in that particular opening. All right, this miss is an opportunity to win a tempo by threatening a queen. So best would have been that. Yep, I saw that in the game. I think I mentioned it. Um, where I was thinking they could do that. Whew. You know, then what do I do? So more analysis to look at. Okay. And a mistake here. Now white is ahead. Best would have been to retreat the queen and just line up on my king. All right, they're saying that is a great move, attacking the queen. That was a strong discovery, and you'll win material because now I can pick this off. Oh, a blunder. This permits the opponent to win material through a fork. Best would have been just moving the queen up here and attacking my queen, but I would still be able to pick this pawn off. All right, so that's the best move. Forking. Oh, and then we're threatening to jump up here and fork the king and a rook. Um, but what do they do? Oh, man. They make another big mistake here. So now we're forking the king and queen. That's where they resigned. All right, back to the beginning. Let's dig a little bit deeper. And remember to do some analysis on your own games because that you can really learn a lot, you know, especially if you can use this tool uh, on chess.com where it analyzes, reviews your game, and then you can analyze with the computer and see what you're doing wrong and try and you know, prevent those mistakes in the future. All right, so the Jabava London, we have D4, Knight to F6, um, and they could play d4, d5 in the beginning, you know, and then you could play knight to c3. So you can reach uh, this position right here in a few different ways. So now, computer recommends e6 here as the best move. So they develop their bishop. Now white has a slight edge. Um, and so e3 is the recommendation. But I played f3 just because I saw this in the book. I don't know if I got the timing right, but f3 keeps the knight and the bishop out of e4, g4, and it lets you gain time by pushing forward with the g pawn. You know, you can get this king side moving and sometimes get an attack on their king when they castle over here. But, you know, not always. Like, it didn't really happen in this game. I kind of got on the defensive once again. And an opponent um, kind of mentioned that. All right, so this is saying this is the Queen's Pawn Opening Shigorin variation. Um, but I believe this is called the Jabava. Jabava London system. Because uh, the London system is usually when you have d4, a bishop on f4. Now, sometimes you don't put this knight on c3. That's where the Jabava 
London system is different. You know, in the normal London, you might go knight to f3 here, and then, you know, maybe bring your knight from b to d2, and then you can fortify this d pawn with c3 possibly and e3. Uh, but anyway, f3 is played with the idea of pushing the g pawn, you know, starting an attack on the king side. So now c5, an inaccuracy. The computer recommends what here? Um, computer recommends bishop to g6. So retreating the bishop immediately before it's chased away. Uh, or a6 to keep the knight out of b5 and the threat here. So c5 is played. Now the computer recommends e4 here. An immediate e4. Hmm. Okay, well... Let's see what they, you know, I'll go back one, see what they should have played here. Um, so a6, that's what the computer should have played. You know, and then of course we will follow it up with our plan of pushing g4 and, you know, pushing that bishop back and gaining some time to keep pushing forward on the king side. So they played c5 in the game and then we responded with e3. Now, the computer wants e4 here. So e4, then the best thing to do is for them to capture. And now, you know, we recapture, I would assume. No. Huh, that's very interesting. Recapturing and attacking, um, that is the second best move. The best move is d5, just pushing forward. And now, you know, they should go ahead and just capture another pawn. Uh, but this does help us recapture and develop our knight. Now, g6. I guess that would help develop this bishop or a6 to keep our knight out of here. All right. Well, I won't dig too deep into it because I need to just get a light understanding of this Jabava to begin with before I dig too deep into the lines. And I'll have to dig the book out you know, and see... You know, start getting these lines written down and memorizing more and just learning more. All right, so e3 is what I played. Uh, they respond with knight to c6, which is tied for the second best move. You know, this is now it's saying it's the best move. Uh, so this is a good move. Just develop the other knight. So we just continue with our plan of g4. So that's the best move. They retreat. Huh. Although, computer recommends counterattacking our knight. So that might be an interesting alternative. So now we played knight to b5. Computer does not like that. It's saying we should have immediately pushed forward with h4, threatened to trap this bishop. Uh, then between h6 and h5, it looks like the recommendation is that. Although now it's saying h5 is better. So I may have to increase the power, the depth of the computer, the settings in the future. I bumped them up a little bit, you know, I thought maybe that would help, but now it's saying uh, h5, eh? So if you have h5, well then the recommendation is g5. Then, you know, that kicks the knight. Oh, but they recommend a counterattack here. So 
or you just move the knight immediately. Something like that. So B, knight to b5 was played. And then rook to c8. So this is stopping the fork. You know, if we bring that knight up and try and fork, you know, if that rook wouldn't have moved there, we could fork the king and the rook. So that stops that. Now, you know, what is that knight doing there? Um, I played c3. Computer did not like that. Once again, the recommendation is h4, threatening to trap that bishop. And then it looks like after h5, black is ahead by the equivalent of a pawn here. Hmm, or more. So h5, once again, they want the g5 move and the knight would have to retreat. All right, so it looks like I need to learn timing as well, the timing on when to push these pawns. And I could have put up more of a fight against my opponent, I guess, if I once I learned the timing for these different plans in this Jabava London system. All right, c3 was played, that was the mistake, and my opponent captures a missed opportunity. What would have been better here? So what did it say? Uh, a6 should have been played, kicking the knight immediately. So you kick the knight, now the knight has to go to a3, uh, and then you have what? h5. Hmm. H5 is what they recommend. So do we want to look at that or not? I don't know. H5 just attacks this pawn. You know, do you push forward? Yes, the computer's saying you push forward once again, chasing that knight. Okay, so in the game, they captured our pawn, and we missed an opportunity. We should have captured towards the center. So capturing towards the center then we would have ah, computers recommending queen to b6 here attacking our knight we should play queen to b3 hmm queen to b3 Although now the computer's saying h4. So once again, that theme of trying to, you know, threatening to trap the bishop and forcing them to respond. But here, if we play that queen to b3 move, um, they could go e6. Uh, then what do we have? Rook to c1 here. Okay, but in the game, we had this capture away. Well, we captured... We're already in the center. We should have brought another pawn into the center and left room for our knight to retreat, possibly. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. After that, they play the best move, it looks like. Chasing our knight. We have to go knight to a3. You know, or we could have ignored that and played h4. Uh, but this is best. Now h5 looks like their best response. Uh, but they played e6. So they played that instead. But it looks like the computer prefers h5. So once again, we push to g5. The knight retreats to d7. And then we move our knight up to e2. Hmm. Knight to e2. Let's see if the computer still says that this is best. Well, now it's saying bishop to d3. And I believe uh, I saw kind of a similar position in the Jabava London book by Simon Williams. Um, and it was saying bishop to d3 here to get rid of this bishop because that bishop does have a nice diagonal down through the center. And, you know, you would be giving up your good bishop for a bad one, but it gets rid of this strong bishop because the bishop is outside uh, this pawn 
you know, and if they push to E6, they'll be outside of the chain and not blocked in like uh, bad bishops can be sometimes. All right, E6 is played. So then we play queen to A4, a mistake. Knight to C2 is preferred, bringing this knight back to the center. Oh, and the computer likes getting rid of that knight. Queen captures. Oh, but then you have this. Huh. Giving up a pawn. But the computer, well, the computer's saying black is ahead now. And maybe I got that wrong earlier. Maybe black was ahead by a pawn. And I mistakenly said white was ahead uh, earlier in the game. So that is not good. Yeah, so... It looks like whatever I did, I let black carry the momentum in this game, you know, which was probably this weird knight move and developing everything over here. So I don't know. That's why I, I don't think I like that move like that. Um, I mean, what else can you do? Hmm move the queen up here maybe to here instead of here but then you could be attacked so I, I don't know i ended up moving here but now it says that uh black is even further ahead bishop to d but you have to remember what the computer says it's a guideline you know and it's usually a pretty good one but you got to think, unless your computer is, or excuse me, unless your opponent is cheating with a computer, they're going to make human moves. So they're usually not going to catch everything and they will make mistakes. So you don't have to play all the best moves if you can just find good ones and try not to make too many uh, mistakes. Then you can go a long way. So bishop to d6. Um or excuse me, it's saying after they played bishop to d6. So the best thing here is to go ahead and capture their bishop and knock that out, it looks like. All right. So we develop that. They castle, which is best. Uh, we play h4 finally, you know, threatening to trap that bishop. Uh, but now there's a counterattack here. The computer says it would have been even better just to capture the bishop right away. Um, hmm. Then I would go here, attacking their bishop. Then I could you know, maybe pick off their bishop with my knight. Uh, anyway, capture is best. Knight captures. Oh, it wanted the bishop capture, saying that that would have been better. So capturing that was the best option um man we're still down by the equivalent of two pawns in this game according to the computer so capture is best now h5 should be played and that's what we did although now the computer is saying f4 would have been better hmm Okay, that would have kicked the bishop back. And then we could push forward. Well, then, oh, let me look at that. Okay. If we go there, they could play b5, attacking my queen. Then we could capture over here. Then b4. Although now it's saying rook to a8. So what do we do here? Um, we let that knight go, capture their bishop and attack their other, you know, attack their knight. They could capture. Um, should we capture? No, because they can threaten, they can capture and threaten a promotion. Hmm. All right, so queen captures, keeping our pawns uh, 
you know, keeping the integrity of our pawn structure here. Uh, as my friend Jeff would say, good pawn structure. We have to have good pawn structure. So, you know, that makes a difference. You don't want too many pawn islands. Uh, I have three. They only have two. Uh, but I'm ahead. I would be ahead in material here. So, which is crazy because they're saying that black is still ahead by the equivalent same black still almost has a winning advantage here so knight oh excuse me knight takes g4 so he gets back one of the pawns and my king is stuck in the center um queen up to d6 hmm just protecting all right i'm not going to dig too deep into this that you know, i just wanted to give you uh, an example of an alternate variation. So h5 was played. Uh, they moved the bishop to the only square where it's safe and attacked my knight. So knight up to d4. And instead, looks like castling would have been better. Hmm. Now, the reason I thought about castling, the reason I didn't, because if I castle, at some point I was worried about maybe some kind of push here. And open, you know, I'm, I'm kind of stuck here. But I'm attacking their bishop right away. So what does it say we should do? B5, queen over to B3. Hmm. They don't want us to take that pawn. Uh, but then it recommends the bishop taking this knight. So let's see what happened in the game. So the knight moved. Now we have a check. This is an inaccuracy. Once again, the computer prefers b5, attacking the queen. And then it does not want us to capture... The pawn it says queen to d1 would be best and now we're attacking the bishop um, bishop to g3 check king is forced to go to d2 capture queen captures b4 we capture and this is pretty crazy because you know we're ahead upon uh, but because our king is stuck in the middle it says black has a winning advantage here so queen to b6 threatening to capture here uh, we should go queen up to d3 to help protect and now, queen takes b4 check. Oof, it's looking pretty rough here. If we go there, queen captures, knight blocks, and then rook at f to e8 check. King to f1. The king is just running. Rook to c3, attacking our queen. Queen to d2. And rook at e to c8, just piling on the pressure. Um, and now the recommendation. Man, yeah, see, this just looks bad. <laughs> so that... Black is nice and safe, and we're just being chased all over. So in the game, we have a check. Um, they capture our pawn, or excuse me, our bishop. So we're trading bishops. Um, it prefers this capture instead, but I don't know if that made too much of a difference. Um, and now rook to e8, trying to take the open file. But once again... Computer says that b5 is best. 
And now, the best move is not to take this pawn, but queen to b3. Hmm. Queen to b3. I mean, in the game, I probably would have done that. And then, what? They go b4. Computer recommends h6 now, but you get the idea. We saw some of that before. All right, let's get back to this. What actually happened in the game? Rook to e8. We played queen to c2, but that's a, a missed opportunity. It looks like we should have just got our king over into the corner, into some relative safety over there. So what does it say? King, well now it's saying king to c2. So here it's saying king to c1. So if we moved here, um, saying that's best, and once again it wants this b5 move. But we played queen to c2. Finally, <laughs> b5 is played after the queen is already gone. And then, but it's still the best move, it looks like, because you're threatening to push here, but now you can't even capture with the pawn because the rook is pinning that pawn to the queen. So we play this to cover, but it looks like better would have been uh, g5. See? Huh. I didn't think that was a good move, g5. It's saying g5 because of this bishop to f4 check, and then you pick that off. So now it's saying b4 first would have been better. You know, but I was thinking about this move. Bishop to f4. Uh, king has to go to d1. And now they still want that b4 move. You know, but you could just pick that off. Then, but it says that's a mistake. Queen to g2 now attacking. But, well, you have to watch out. Because this knight could jump in here. If your bishop... Huh. Alright. Well, that gives white some activity, I guess. All right, so knight to b1, computer did not like that. And now we have b4 attacking. So, you know, we can't capture the pawn because we're pinned by the rook. So we move our queen to get out of that pin. They capture, it helps our knight improve its position. You know, an eye of this d5 pawn that's isolated. You know, and once this knight moves, we can pile up on that. Bishop attacks with check, but queen to b6 would have been better. So, you know, this is what we need to look at because this looks more dangerous. It's saying with that move, black would have almost a winning advantage here. So, or maybe a winning advantage. So, if we played king to c2, computer recommends that as being best, but then we have bishop to e5, which I saw that in the game, that he might pile up on this knight at some point. There was some possibility of that in the game. And then we would want to go rook to d1 to help cover the knight. And now rook to c4. Hmm. So what do we do now? What do we do now? Yeah, knight to b3 is the best move. And here the recommendation is to capture this knight. Can they just push forward here? If they push forward, then what do we do? Hmm. I mean, what if they just play that immediately? Oh, that's a mistake because 
yeah okay that would be a blunder my fault i wasn't looking clearly at everything so you can't do that that would be a big old blunder giving up the rook so delete that move the pawn is protecting here so best move is to capture uh, then recapture and now whoa let's see rook to e3 okay yep that is a pretty great move because now you're eyeing this that the queen was protecting um queen has to go oh to d2 and it's looking rough now d4 can be played oh man yeah or you could just capture some pawns hope it doesn't like that i guess it's saying now that that was inaccurate that even better would be just to pick that off you know and you have room for the queen to jump in here at some point so rook at h to f1 so they want us to go over here and fight but you know at this point we're just behind so back to the game and let's finish this out so bishop to f4 was played we're in check we move over uh, and now queen to d6 a mistake rook to e3 would have been better uh, attacking our queen here and then what should we do uh, recommendation is queen to d1 and now queen up to c7 just lining up on our king although now the computer wants this move lining up here on this pawn all right well king should get out of there break that uh pin or not you know just get out of the pin and it looks like a sacrifice is in order sacrifice the rook as a a famous youtuber would say gotham chess all right so capture then if you capture we have rook to b8 check king up to c2 to help cover that and now queen to a5 oh although now it's recommending you know a drop back of this knight but then that pawn could be captured so after queen to a5 oh now you're threatening that so queen to a1 kind of protects that and this queen to a4 check king up to d3 rook to e8 oh man now you're threatening over here so you want to fight for control of that open file queen to c4 check oh man and then king to c2 it's looking pretty rough pile up the pressure on this pawn rook to d1 to help protect then bishop to e3 adding more pressure now it's saying to just get out of there with king to b1 huh yeah anyway white would be in trouble so back to the game king to c2 uh the queen moves forward and now we have rook to e1 fighting for control of the open file the queen moves over to b6 uh you know and i thought my opponent was going to line up here and try and cause problems you know down this way uh but it's saying here i should have captured immediately now what should they have done instead of queen to b6 it looks like bishop to e5 just blocking the path here uh, attacking the knight and then let's see let's see g5 is the recommendation so 
looks like g5 would be best just kicking that knight although now it's saying h6 would be a good move but anyway queen to b6 was played and we played king to b1 so we got out of one pin on this knight but now this pawn is pinned so you know either way it's looking pretty rough but the game is more even now so look at the score here we're just barely behind here by like a third of a pawn so what would have been better it would have been better to capture but i didn't want to have him recapture and then have control of the open file but it looks like you know maybe that's what we should have done um Knight at C to E2 now is recommended. Hmm. So we should have done that. Or Rook to D1. So we should have gone there. Attacking. Bishop up to G5. Ooh, do you really want to go there and trap the bishop? So, yeah, now the computer's saying it would be better to do that. Uh, and then H6 or King to B1 now. And then knight up to d7 to help protect here. Protect the bishop. Um, king to b1. Bishop to f6. Dropping back. Now we should capture. Capture. b3. h6. And knight to f5 attacking or excuse me knight to f5 attacking up here hmm. all right back to the game king to b1 was played the rook moves in here uh not wanting to trade pieces i assume that's why my opponent played that but he's down to around a minute of time left so we pile up here on d5 or excuse me he def he adds a rook to the defense of d5. And better would have been bishop to e5. You know, just attacking here. So, you know, computer once again wants that move. And then we should play... Uh, looks like now knight to b3 is recommended. But that would allow d4. d4... Knight to e4. That would block the scope of the bishop, though. So now the computer's saying it would have been better to capture. Then we capture. The knight captures. And then rook to c1. Ooh. d4. Capture capture rook captures and rook to d8 attacking our queen all right well what happened in the game rook moved we get off of the dark square so that bishop can't threaten us you know maybe we threatened to double rooks but i was worried if i tried to do that he would attack the rook on the bottom uh, so, queen moves over here, and it's saying it would have been better to bring the rook down. So, we move our rook. Uh, once again, we stay on the light squares. And here, I thought, well, I better watch out. Keep this rook guarding the c1 square in case there was some kind of threat. Uh, one, you know, if this knight had to move, I need the. Oh, I gotta watch out though, because. You know, if this knight moves, there could be a sacrifice here. Sacrificing the queen, the rook captures, and the rook comes in protected by the bishop. So, knight to d7 was played a mistake. Now they want queen back here. Uh, and then we should play, what, knight to f5? I guess just jumping our knight forward. 
And, you know, the computer's changing its mind, saying queen to f5, attacking the bishop. Okay. Hmm. In the game, we had knight to d7. And then we played knight to b3. The computer says that is a great move. And at this point, my opponent only has 16 seconds left on the clock, and he makes a blunder. So queen to f8 would have been best, according to the computer. And then we should go queen to f5. Although now they want us to just pick that pawn off. You know, or I guess we could even try and pick this pawn off. So that move or this move, we pick up material uh, knight to f6, helping to guard this. And now rook up to d4, attacking the bishop. Bishop retreats back. And now we have rook to e5, just piling the pressure on here. Uh, rook to e8. We capture. Queen would capture. It looks like either piece could capture. But if the queen captures, now we have queen all the way down to e2 attacking their queen. All right. Well, let's look at the blunder they made. Queen to b6. So then we go ahead and capture the best move in the position, attacking the queen, and now we're ahead by plus six. So they move over, but this allows the fork here. So what would have been best? Best would have been queen to b7, uh, but even if they did that, we fork anyway, but the rook and the king this time. So if the king moves, um, we just, oh, now it's saying not to do that. Huh. Very interesting. The best, you know, I would think I would have immediately just picked off the rook, but an even better move apparently is that. So the queen is under attack. Now you would not want to take that knight with your knight because of the queen sacrifice with check the rook would be forced to capture and then you deliver a back rank mate so queen to b5 is recommended and now the queen should capture pawn captures and now you can go ahead and pick off this rook and rook takes c8. Huh. Now we just pick up the knight. You know, and we're just ahead. So what about, instead of capturing that, what if... Oh, you can't capture because the rook is pinning this knight. Oh, man. So you got to do that. And then, yeah, then we just have check, king over to g8, and we would just be winning with this extra material. But in the game, after we had the blunder, we go up and attack. Then another mistake. So whenever you have a blunder, you know, maybe it wasn't as noticeable of a blunder once they moved um, here. It just gives away a pawn, but it allows them, you know, maybe they're thinking, oh, I lost that pawn, and now what do I do? And they overlooked this fork here. You know, or maybe there wasn't anything they could do about it. It looks like no. So, you know, they moved here, and then we just forked their king and queen. All right, there you have it. That is how we pulled off the victory today. So I look forward to seeing you in the you know, day 101 and beyond the next 100 games where I will be trying to uh, put together this new repertoire with 
the Jabava London system with white. Uh, and then I'll play the Carol Khan against E4, against the King Pawn moving out to uh, with black. And then if they move the Queen Pawn to D4, I'll probably try the Slav. So then I haven't decided yet how I should combat C4. So you know, let's find out. We'll see in the future games. All right, feel free to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, also, you know, leave comments with anything you would like to say. I'll try and take your recommendations. Um, so I will be playing or putting the, I think I'm gonna put the opening uh, on the thumbnail page, you know, on the thumbnail of each video when I do this Quest for 2000 series. That way you can see what opening is being played. Um, anyway, thank you for watching and have a super chess day.